So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Go to Antique Obsessions for the hottest in jewelry, antiques, repurposed, solid sterling silver, one-of-a-kind, handmade by Bruce and Jaja. Go to uh, our Facebook, which is Antique Obsessions, or you can go to Etsy.com and go to Antique Obsessions, one word, or type it into your Google and find us there. Thanks. Tribal, Tribal. primitive, Primitive. rustic, Rustic. burning man. Conceptual subculture for the edgiest, most cutting edge designs of jewelry today. Go to Etsy.com slash shop slash conceptual subculture or one word either by going to Google or search Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com and type in one word conceptual subculture. You will find the hottest designs using natural stones with wire wrap rings rough, raw, genuine, semi-precious gemstone jewelry, solid sterling silver, copper, leather, organite, bracelets, pendants, chokers, men's copper cups with sterling accents, eco-friendly, repurposed, original, one-of-a-kind design earrings. Support MBN by going to Conceptual Subculture on Etsy. Hello, Jordan. Thank you for joining us. Yes, I'm happy to be here. Happy, uh, happy birthday. Yet? Happy, happy birthday, Jordan. Well, thank you. I, uh, I have finally arrived at 77 years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're broadcasting out live right now on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, we're not 
Uh, we haven't started the show yet. I'm about to kick off the show, but everybody, uh, be sure to wish Jordan Maxwell a very happy birthday, 76th birthday, right? I mean, it's it's incredible. 77. 77. 77. Excellent. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> awesome to be able to spend uh, the, the, your birthday with you, have a birthday bash, you know, and uh, expose the truth like you always do. Yep. Uh, I've been trying for quite a few years, so still here. Yeah, all right. and thank you again for having me on. Thank you for being on, Jordan. Let's see, we are uh, we're live on TalkStream Live now. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Bruce Montalvo Show, December 28, 2017. A birthday bash, a birthday party with none other than Jordan Maxwell. Happy birthday, Jordan. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for uh, having me, and I appreciate it. Always, always delighted to do a show with you anytime. You are the most... Uh, asked about guests, I mean, they're always asking me, when are you going to have Jordan Maxwell on again? I mean, I get constant emails, just, you, you are the, the, the best guest we have on the show. And I have a lot, a lot of great guests, I had John Lear on the other week, you know? Well, I, I, I appreciate the kindness, and, and uh, but uh, I also keep in mind, when I'm, when I'm given a compliment like that, I always keep in mind that uh, Abraham Lincoln got a standing ovation the night they shot him. Oh no! So, uh, <laughs> so I appreciate the, the kindness, but uh, I'm just an ordinary person doing what I do, and uh, I appreciate people who who, who care about it, and and, and uh, that's why I do what I do for people who want to know. <clears throat> so that's what we do. Absolutely. Did you get that uh, copper uh, money clip I made for you? Uh, you know what? I haven't checked my mail because I've got to walk about a half a block to my to my mail uh, thing, and I haven't gone there yet because I'm, I'm now in uh, Colorado, right? And and uh, it's been 19 degrees out, and for an old man, I would prefer to stay inside until it warms oh, no, up no, no, a little no. bit. Leave the yeah. money, leave the money clip out there, John. It's going to be there. Don't worry about it. But you know it's okay, interesting I, because I put a UFO on there for you. I uh, I hand forged the UFO onto the money clip, and oh, okay. uh, and this whole week, this whole week has been insane with UFO sightings. I mean, have you heard of some of these recent UFO sightings, Jordan? I, I've heard a little bit about them, but uh, it doesn't surprise me. I, I understand what's going on. It doesn't surprise me at all. Right. I am. I am. I'm totally convinced that 2018 very well might be uh, an important time for the uh, the UFO experience to really come into its own, and that uh, people are really going to begin to see some uh, extraterrestrial uh, stuff going on big time now, and and it's about time that they show themselves because I've always. Uh, known that they they were here by they I mean the extraterrestrial life forms. Uh, I know that we're not the only life forms in the universe. My God, and so right. Yeah, you know, so I'm sure that that whoever they are, they've been here for a long time. Right, and they. And gave, when I say a yes. long time, I mean a long time. Yeah, and they they gave us the technology. I mean, it seems kind of fishy. I mean, they're saying it's this SpaceX. Uh, missile launch, and you know this is the same blast that was observed in uh, in Russia, like in 1937, or Vancouver. I mean, all over the world, even in religious art, this uh, this UFO. I mean, who was it? Was it Santa and his reindeer? I mean, who, <laughs> I just don't know. I think uh, SpaceX is full of it, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, that's a it's a very strange world we live in, and now because of. The situation that has finally beginning to develop where we are now facing uh, uh, something which is not of this world. We're facing yeah. an incredible time in the history of the earth and in, in human life on the earth. Uh, we are heading for some serious, incredible uh, problems that are facing us now. And when you think about and understand the significance of the problems we face, 
it's it uh, it automatically to my mind it automatically calls to mind maybe we we need some outside intervention to to do something to save the human race to save the human experiment on earth because the problems that we're facing are are so enormous yeah. that you're looking at probably the lo the loss of life uh, on the earth period well, and, Ronald and, Reagan uh, said that he said that at the United Nations he said we would have to all team up for a one world order and that's what I think they're trying to do with this recent SpaceX thing it looks like some type of project blue beam uh, operation and the Pentagon I mean they're taking UFOs seriously they just announced that they've been spending 22 million dollars on UFO research you know as yeah. of 2007, well, that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but it's still, I mean, 2018, I mean, whoa, I mean, I'm seeing a, a major disclosure and turnaround on these uh, machines the military industrial complex isn't telling us about. Yeah, well, also, uh, that's the 22 million that they acknowledge. Yeah. But, but, uh, <clears throat> but there are trillions that have gone uh, and, and, the government can't account for trillions of dollars that have been misplaced somewhere. And there are billions and billions of dollars that have been misplaced in research organizations and the government. And so the $22 million they're talking about, I'm thinking it's probably uh, on the world scale that's really legitimate. I think there's probably hundreds of millions over the many, many years since the 40s and the 50s and the 60s wow. and the 70s. I think that the, that the governments have known for a long, long time ago, from even before the Second World War, that there was uh, extraterrestrial or other life forms on the earth that have come here. And I think that those uh, governments of the world have been already for, you know, since the 30s and 40s, easy, been uh, researching this subject because they know it's true, it's real. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's bigger than $22 million. Oh, yeah. $22 I mean, million uh, they want how, to much, how much money are they spending to go to Antarctica? I mean, why are so many world leaders today? Traveling yeah. to Antarctica, I mean, can you uh, shed a little light on that for us, Jordan? No, not really, because <laughs> I think, because I don't know, I, know. I, I haven't been there, but uh, the, 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 the two guys that I think who are really it, uh, important in that subject, uh, and I have, I've only heard a little bit of each one of them on that subject of Antarctica, is Joseph Farrell. Yes, Joseph Farrell is an extraordinarily brilliant man, and he's a, he's uncovering materials that I have been interested in for years. Great author, but he is such an extraordinary man, and the, and the second man uh, that I highly, highly praise, equal to Joseph Farrell, is Peter Lavenda. Uh, last name is L E V E N D A. Peter him, Lavenda yeah. and Joseph Farrell are two of the most extraordinary people on the earth today, in my humble opinion. And they're both talking quite a bit about what's going on in Antarctica. So and I haven't had a chance to hear all of it yet, but uh, that is a very important subject, I think. It's really starting to, to get a lot of play all around the world well, Jordan, there's, about there's, what's yes, going on. There's breaking news out of Antarctica. I mean, they actually discovered that there's alien life in Antarctica, uh, I mean, the International Space Station, they said they found uh, this uh, alien life, and uh, it, it could live in, like, zero-degree temperatures, like Antarctica. This is like uh, space microbes that could, you know, they trickle down, and they're set to shapeshift. I mean, this is scary stuff. Yeah, well, that does not surprise me, because, uh, because of things that I've known for many, many years about the extraterrestrial. I've been looking at that subject for many, many years, and I've heard all kinds of stories. I've heard all kinds of experts from military, government scientists, and, and uh, researchers, and astronauts, and God knows, all kinds of interesting and important people have been talking about the extraterrestrial presence on the Earth. So whatever they begin to really start to find today uh, doesn't surprise me. 
I, I got this. I bet there's a lot more yet. We are yet to you know find out about. So right. it's become yeah. a very interesting time to be alive. Absolutely, 2018. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what UFOs uh, <laughs> and incredible sightings we see in 2018. If 2017 was literally, I think the, the year of the UFO. Yeah, well, because of the situation on the Earth, mankind is now, uh, it, it, the situation in the world today, not just in America, but in the whole Earth today, the the situation that the human family finds itself in is uh, so critical, so profoundly critical with uh I mean, we could uh, we can talk for hours about all of the different uh, problems which are facing the human family. I mean, yeah. with the uh, with the disaster, nuclear disasters, in and the uh, tsunami, which yes, has caused so much problems. Well. With the uh, you know, with the radioactive activity now from Japan, that's that's now encompassing the world of mankind. Uh, you know, in the United Nations a few years ago said that by 20, uh, 2020 or 2025, which is a few years from now, a very few years from now, that there will be no living life in the oceans, period, on the earth, period. Wow. There will be nothing alive in the oceans at all, period. And so, you know, think about the foods that feed the, the human family and the, and the fish that is required all over the world by human family. Well, if the UN is right. Uh, the, the, the oceans are dying from our pollution and radioactivity and all the other stuff we're dumping into the ocean because we don't, don't have any place to put it. Well, yeah, even and intercontinental so, uh, ballistic uh, missiles, they, they yeah, shoot course, them underneath the plate tectonics, these crazy bastards. I know, that's what I'm talking about. And so we've got serious problems facing the earth, and, and it calls into question what's going to happen to the creation that we call the human race. Uh, because it's not just the Russians are in trouble or the Chinese. No, we all are, the whole earth. And so it requires something is going to happen, something very big. And so if there is an extraterrestrial presence in the heavens, which I think there is, and if there is some kind of a, of a, uh, a militaristic establishment in the heavens between powers that are in, in the, out there that are watching us, something is going to have to happen soon. Uh, to and I don't know what it is, <clears throat> but whatever it is, it's going to have to be big to save the human family. Wow! And so. <clears throat> Jordan, uh, I've been I've been doing a little bit of research, my homework, as you like to say. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm I'm feeling that uh, a major earthquake might happen. Uh, you know, they're always saying major earthquake, major earthquake. But I'm I mean, with the with the fires that happened in California as of late, I mean. So many conspiracy theories about how those fires even started to begin with. And, yep. I mean, I just want to ask you, I mean, wh why did you leave L.A. after so many years? I mean, did you feel that it was it was coming down to that moment, that moment of no, Armageddon? No, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, because I, I uh, have been living in Los Angeles for about 56 years. <coughs> Excuse me, 56 years. In, in the Hollywood area, and uh, uh, it just so happened that the circumstances happened to me, which it has always happened the same way in my life. Circumstances will happen where it forces me to do something, and when I don't know what to do, and I don't have any money to do anything with, and I'm broke, and have no place to live, and I and I don't have any uh, ability to you know, to do anything. I just have to go with the flow and see what will happen. <clears throat> and when I do that, uh, all of a sudden something pops up out of nowhere. I get a phone call or somebody contacts me and says, look it, uh, we got a place for you to live and this and that. We got this for you, that for you. Come, come stay here with us. And I'm thinking, well, I mean, I've got to leave because I'm broke and I have no place to live anyway. Uh, so then I go there, and it turns out that that was a good move to make. 
<clears throat> and so then I went to Las Vegas because it was it sounded like a great idea because uh, I was going to have a nice place to work from and I could make some money there etc well I got there and it worked out okay for about a year 11 months and then it went sour uh, and so I had to move and then I got a phone call from a dear friend who offered me a job just out of nowhere. He just called and offered me a job in, uh, in uh, Colorado. <clears throat> and he helped me financially to move and, uh, and got me a place uh, to live when I got here. And I'm now working with a very large company. And so things just kind of happen. And I don't make them happen. And I don't have any idea about how they are. You know, what I'm going to do, I just rely on the spirit of, 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 the, of the time. Uh, I'm a great believer in the divine spirit in the universe, so I just wait and see what God will do, so to speak. And that's what happens. So here I am now in, uh, in Colorado, and I'm working for a beautiful company, an incredibly fascinating company that's doing some uh, things which I have wanted to do all my life and now I'm able to do them with a very important company and I've got a nice place to live so I just go go with the flow and whatever the great spirit wants me to do I just you know it, it, it'll provide it for me and so that's how I ended up here I've always trusted the spirit to uh, protect me and I'm still here at 77 years old I'm still doing what I love doing, that is to talk to people and, and try and educate people to think more about the world they live in and where we're going. And in order to do that, you've got to, uh, you've got to introduce the idea of where did you come from to start with. Exactly. Yeah, and what are you doing here now, and what does that mean about where you're going soon? So it's been a strange, a very strange life I have lived. For some reason, the spirit of the universe, the great spirit, somehow or another always protects me, and, and I'm still alive, you know, doing what I do. So I trust that, <clears throat> but right. uh, I don't plan anything. I just let it, let it go and see what happens. Uh, I should have planned a big old birthday cake, but you're all the way in Colorado. Yeah, right. <laughs> you have a lot, a lot yeah. of candles to put on that thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate it anyway. I appreciate the thought. Right. No, Jordan, you're you're uh, amazing. Um, uh, it's just great to have you on. And uh, let me see. Uh, it, you 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 didn't feel like it was um, like Armageddon was was coming, you know, close to Los Angeles. I mean, they always no, talk about I, it. Uh, no, no, I I I, I think. Because I've been there for over 56 years, I've just had enough of the tragic lifestyle that California has become. Yes. California has become uh, an imp incredibly um, bad place to be. And there are so many people who, in, uh, in America and around the world, who picture California, Los Angeles, the way it used to be many years ago, you know, with the Hollywood and the, the yeah. sunshine and the beautiful homes and, and everybody's a millionaire and everybody's making money and California with the motion picture industry and entertainment business. So it was a real, uh, you know, la-la land. And so, Precisely. and of course, when I got to Los Angeles back in 1959, it was still an incredibly beautiful, strange, fascinating uh, uh, place where you see movie stars of all kinds of, uh, of brilliant homes and, uh, and, and the entertainment. It, just, it was just an incredibly mystical, magical place, Los Angeles, a city of entertainment. And, uh, and so when I got there at 19 years old, I was a 19-year-old kid in a big city, and it was a magical time, no doubt about it. But today, uh, you know, now there's just way too many millions and millions of people uh, on the freeways. The traffic is horrible, uh, and, and if you live there, you know, God help you if there's an earthquake, if there's going to be a, a very bad, you know, earthquake uh, 
you can't even get to work in the morning on the freeway because there's so many millions and millions of people oh, in Los Angeles. I remember that. Yeah. So what are you going to do if there's a huge earthquake and you got 37 million people and everybody wants to get out of town uh, because of the chaos? Uh, well, there's only a couple of highways going out of town, and all you need is one old truck to break down on a highway, and that means all the traffic is stuck until they can get him moved. And there's only 37 million cars that want, <laughs> and people want to get out of town, and, and an old truck is going to all of them. Total hell. Total, total. And That's so what they call it, hell A. So. Hell, hell A. It, it will it will be a horrible horrible tragedy that's uh, that's monumental in, in size and scope if if something happens in LA because I don't know how many it's over thirty over thirty million people uh, in the in the LA Orange County area. Well, they were all startled uh, with this recent SpaceX. Uh you know, UFO missile that they shot. I mean, they're saying it's not a UFO. They're saying it's, it was SpaceX, but everybody thought it was a UFO. It looked crazy. <laughs> well, it may have been. Who the hell knows? Exactly. Knows? They're not going to, and they sure as hell ain't going to tell us, right, Jordan? No, no, no. They're not going to tell you because people, the, people, the people on this earth who are really well informed and who do have the real knowledge of what's going on, there's not that many, it's, a, it's a, not that many people, but there are some people on the earth who are, in fact, uh, in, in well-informed, but they're in charge, and they need to know, that's why they know, because they are in a position to know, right. uh, but it's like uh, George Carlin says, it's a big club, and you ain't in it, so you're not going to know what they know, and they're, they're getting out of town. Right. So when you see the guys who are really well informed and they're selling their property and getting out of town and going to South America and going to Chile and, and, and other places in South America, uh, it begins to sound like something's up and they know it, but you Absolutely. don't. So I know something terrible is on this way. And, uh, and so I just do the best I can at trying to help people to understand you know, where we are in time and what's going on and how it works and why it works the way it does. So uh, the one thing that's amazing to me is how many people don't care about the kind of knowledge I'm talking about. Oh, no, they, <clears throat> sorry, they tell us, go play ball. Uh, like you said, yeah. so go play ball and there's this bread and circus. They want us to just be obsessed with uh, what, whatever on, whatever's on the sports page. It's just a total bread and circus. Yep, and uh, and then we are, and, and then they will they they plaster us every day uh, with the so-called news of the royal wedding in England, the royal wedding, or the or the royal this and the royal that, the queen mum, and all that bunch of crap. Then you come to find out the most de devastating, dirtiest part of the human family is royalty. Yeah. These people are mentally deranged, and they're into drug trafficking, child sacrifice, bloodletting, murderous, incredible stuff being done by the so-called royals. And then, of course, when you f find out that the royals have a divine right to rule, oh, then yeah. you ask, well, how do they get a divine right? divine right implies God said they could they be king. Well, uh, the way you get a divine right to be king or queen or royal is that the Pope anoints you to be royal. So that's where we get the idea of a divine right. It's because the Pope said so. Yeah. So if the Pope says that you're okay and you can be king, then you're all right. Well, the, the problem with that is anybody who has the power to put you in to be the leader of a country has the same power to take you out just as easy as if he put you in he could take you out exactly so we are run today by royalty which are nothing more than criminals filled with blood filthy and dirty and degenerate all of them across the board and, 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 if, there, and if there's any good 
once once in a while there might be one or two that are decent human beings we call them royal they will be killed they will get in an accident and and be killed in some kind of an accident or they will die of some suspicious death because the real legitimate authorities on the earth today are extremely demonic and depraved. Oh, yeah, I mean, they must be related to uh, Nimrod, because if they have a divine right, I mean, this whole Christmas holiday goes back to him. Yeah, well... <laughs> and Nimrod so, or G or yeah, Jesus? so the world we live in is, is really a dangerous place. Dangerous place. You know, Einstein said that uh, the world we live in is a very dangerous place. Right. The reason why is not because bad people do bad things. It's because good people do nothing. Right, now and Einstein should know, so, right? I mean, yeah. he was he was stealing patents, from what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I understand. I understand. It's, I, uh, I, know, I am, uh, some of the things I'm absolutely positive of, and one thing I am absolutely positive of is that the whole human race, the one creation on the earth of humans, as humans, we do not have the ability to protect ourselves or to protect the human family. Humans have a lot of things we can do. We could go to the moon and create satellites and build trains, fast trains. We could do all kinds of wonderful things. So but the talent. one thing that humans cannot seem to do, and they're not able to do it, is to protect the human family from predators, from criminals, from, from uh, you know, we're not able to protect ourselves anywhere. The only way you can do it is if you're a criminal yourself and you're a king or a queen, you can surround yourself with all kinds of cannon fodder, all kinds of guards and, and police and military people to protect you and ride around in a pulp mobile. Or, you know, or, uh, but, but if you're just a normal human being on the earth, there's no way to protect you from anything, period. None. Even though the law enforcement is itself a criminal organization. The organizations of, of law enforcement in America are not, it used to be a big laugh. Now it's not only not a laugh, now it's really critically bad. Yeah. Really bad. And so it's falling apart in front of us. We're watching it every day on television and on the news. The government of the United States is falling apart because there's so much corruption. One good man trying to do something is not going to be able to do a thing. Because they have um, uh, principles, right? They're principles. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that, that, that uh, many of these uh, alphabet agencies, the CIA, FBI... Uh, NSA, all of these important uh, agencies are not in point of fact uh, de jure organizations of the U.S. government. What I'm saying is that if you do the homework, you will find that these organizations are, have nothing whatsoever to do with the U.S. government. The U.S. government uh, uh, buys uh, shares in the stock and so, therefore, the U.S. government is now involved with the FBI and the CIA, etc., but they don't own it. They didn't start the uh, CIA. It wasn't founded by them, by the U.S. government. So they're not actually U.S. government organizations. They are private organizations, but, uh, but the U.S. government has a, uh, a financial interest in them. Yeah. You spoke of so, monarchy, uh, Jordan. I mean, most of these organizations, like the NSA, I mean, they even they even do work uh, with uh, GCHQ and they the the British, the monarchy, the Queen. Of course, and the Queen is doing the business with the Saudis. Yes, and the Saudis and the Queen and the U.S. government are doing business all over the world with the mafia. Oh yeah. And the Vatican, and the Vatican is the mafia. The mafia came out of Italy. And it goes all the way back to the times of when, when the people of that area were under Rome. Well, they're still under Rome today. Rome is still the home of the Holy Father. And yeah. My God, when you start to see what the Vatican has done in the past uh, 1,600 years 
with the violence and the selling of children and, and buying the, the selling P2, of people. The P2 Lodge. They lead yep. right to their lodge doorstep. I mean, it's scary it's stuff. Called, it's called Propaganda Due, P2 Lodge. Yes. And even the uh, movie uh, Godfather 3 talks about in the movie, if you watch the movie yes. Godfather the Third. Uh, the third one, talks about P2 Lodge. They, they mentioned it two or three times in the movie. Well, they initiate Pacino. I know that. So, it's a, it's a pretty incredible, uh, it's a pretty incredible story about the world and where it came from and what's going on today and how to protect yourself, how to at least arm yourself with knowledge. Yeah. That's what I try and do, just try and educate people to how the world works. Well, you, you do a great job at it, Jordan. I have listeners here telling us that uh, they've been listening to you for over 10 years or all their life. And, I, I mean, people really appreciate your work. And they're wishing you a happy birthday, you know, all around the, the world, Jordan. Well, you know, I appreciate it. Via the show. Thank, Thank you. For it. You know, it's just amazing to have you on. I mean, it's, it's so many, I mean, just topics we could talk about. Uh, one being uh, the new Star Wars. Have, have you even seen the new Star Wars movies? No, no, I haven't. No. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I'm always interested in whatever the newest big movie is. But, uh, but because of my age and because of my work I'm okay. doing, I'm so busy and I'm too old to be going out anymore. I don't like going out to crowds. I'm scared to death of going to anything that has a crowd. Oh, yeah. Any well, you, ball you game, cold, any yeah. games, anything like that. The where there's over. a crowd, I don't like that at all. I, I'm very afraid of crowds oh. because I understand you know, the, 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 the terrorism today is everywhere. Oh, it's, it's germ <laughs> warfare. They got the germ warfare going on. That's their favorite thing, the chemical warfare. Yep. I mean, you name it. I don't blame you. I don't want to go to the... The theaters either, but I mean, for this new Star Wars, I went out and uh, it, I was watching it. I mean, thanks to your uh, tutelage and your, uh, you know, your knowledge that you you've given that I've been studying. I, I see Yoda up there, and I see Luke Skywalker, and I don't see Yoda or Luke Skywalker. I, I'm going to tell you, what I saw I saw Elifis Levi and the demon Mephisephalis. Uh, it sounds like a venereal disease, but I, I saw them. I said they played it out. Just like in the, the, the pictures that are depicted by Manly P. Hall, uh, Eliphas Levi, I mean, that is that is what they were doing up there. The movie was filled with remote viewing and astral projections. Yep. It's insane. Well, and, and, and probably all of, the, all of the big studios in Hollywood, and I do mean all of them, <clears throat> are very, very, very corrupt. Yes. It's been a very dark and demonic, corrupt, place uh, Hollywood has been for many, many, many years. It's always been a corrupt place with raping and murder and bloodletting and all kinds of prostitution and violence. But today, in my humble opinion, the most depraved of all of the studios, in my opinion, because I lived there for 56 years, uh, is Disney. Disney is the worst of the worst and of the bottom. that's who took over. The Star Wars <coughs> movies, the new Star Wars movies are done by, by Disney. Yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, Disney is the worst. <coughs> and I got reasons for saying that uh, you don't know anything oh, I know. about. Well, I know, right? trust me. Yeah, so I, I, I don't... I don't go to movies anymore. I don't want anything to do with the big Hollywood movies. I'm always interested to see what they come out with because I'm looking for the uh, the, the telltale signs of conspiracy, the words and terms that are used, uh, the ideas and the thoughts expressed in movies. are They're telling you a lot of dark and dirty stuff in movies, but if you don't know what they're talking about, you need to go back and do your homework. Oh yeah, because there's a lot of stuff going on in Hollywood that they're telling you right in front of you know they're telling you right in your face. <clears throat> yeah, and the Star Wars movie, this recent one, uh, I don't know if you've heard of this uh, asteroid that's been uh, uh, surfacing over over the the planet or the, you know the Earth. Uh, they call it Amoa Moa. Have you heard of that? Mm. You know, this Amoa Moa. I mean, it, it it shows up in Star Wars as a ship. So what what is it? An asteroid or a ship? So that's I thought of you when I when I saw that I'm like that's one of the things that Mr. Maxwell says that you know the, that they trickle in the in these things. 
I sure do. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Disney is famous for putting in all kinds of dark stuff. Uh, yes. They just they cram it down your throat. The television ABC <coughs> that Disney now owns is just incredibly filled with the Illuminati secret society symbols, words, terms. Uh, <coughs> it's just an extraordinary... Uh, and to me, I just sit by as an old man because I've been talking about this for some 58 years and watching it grow. And the more I've watched, the, 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 the deeper it goes and the darker it gets. And so I don't know how to, I don't know how to tell the human family how bad it is, <clears throat> because you have to be able to show uh, the connections. And and every time I, every time you see a movie comes out from Disney, there there are symbols and words that are connected with the movie that was before it. Yes. And then, uh, and, and another thing I've noticed over the years, watching slowly but surely over the years, and when there's a Republican president, uh, Republicanism is connected directly to the Nazi Party. Wow. So when you talk about the Republican Party, you're talking about the Nazi Party, the SS, Gestapo, Adolf Hitler stuff. Not all Republicans are are involved in that kind of stuff. But the very concept of the Republican Party is, in point of fact today, over uh, overshadowed and overruled by Nazis, period. But the Democratic Party itself is a purely Marxist, Leninist, Soviet, communist, filthy, degenerate system. And so That's now you can understand why the Democrats are always ranting and raving and fighting with the, uh, the uh, Republican Party. The reason why is because of what Hitler did to Russia. Hitler, uh, you know, with Nazism, invaded Russia. And so the Russian communists are not very happy about the Nazis. And the Nazis are not very happy about the communists. So that's why there's a massive uh, hatred going on in America today uh, that the Democrats are, are, you know, are showing that they hate the Republican Party, they hate the Republican president. But you will also notice that when there's a Republican president, a lot of movies come out of Hollywood uh, against communism, right. against the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, and, and there's movies uh, like uh, you know, Mission Impossible and, and the James Bond movies and all that kind of stuff. When there's a Republican president, so many of the big movies and television shows come out are anti-communist. However, when you have a Democratic president, you will begin to see a lot of anti-Nazi uh, films and videos coming out. Right. So, but if you don't know this stuff, if you're not aware of it, you know, never dawn on you what's really going on. Right. America is between the left and the right. America is now in between Nazism and communism. And uh, so the Republican Party, Nazi, and the Democratic Party, pure Soviet communism. Absolutely. So America today is ruled by uh, all this democratic stuff. You just need to understand this. The, the Democratic Party is a Soviet communist apparatus in America. And if you don't understand that, it doesn't matter because uh, you know, eventually you will see it. One, one, one day you will see it when it's way too late. But all of the communist countries, if you go back the 50s and 60s and 70s, all of the communist countries were always officially referred to as a people's democratic republic. Uh, Cuba was a people's democratic republic of Cuba. The people's democratic republic of China. The people's democratic republic of North Korea. Every single communist country, Soviet communist dominated country, was called the People's Democratic Republic. Right. And so spreading communism was referred to as democracy, the People's Democratic Republic. And so today we are spreading democracy. No, you're spreading Marxist, Leninist communism. Period. End of sentence. 
And it doesn't matter what you think. That's the fact. Right. You know what else I noticed, Jordan? They Hollywood also liked uh, when Barack Obama was president, they were portraying that uh, a black president was going to destroy the entire uh, United States with all sorts of movies, right? Like uh, Jamie well, yeah. Foxx yeah. was, uh, you know, all America went to shit under Jamie Foxx. He was supposed to be Obama or whatever. But then, yeah. but, but what, was the, what was the theme? The day Obama became president, uh, inaugurated as president, all the newspapers and magazines around the world, period. Everything. All of our newspapers, magazines, TV shows, everybody talked about the, the coming of Obama and it represented what they call a new day for the world, a new day for the world, a new day for America. The dawn of the new day, and they did the same thing with Trump. I, I looked at all the articles, I mean, uh, whether it's New York Post or on Google, you type in uh, New Day and Trump, and I mean, they put it in Washington Post, they put it here, they put it all over the place. And then when you understand that the original Soviet Union it was founded back in the uh, 40s, and early 40s, or late 30s, uh, when the Soviet Union was finally being established, uh, their national coat of arms, if you look in the, the dictionary, encyclopedia, you will see that uh, communism was referred to as the dawning of a new day. The dawning of a new day of communism for wow. the whole world. And then when Obama gets in, everywhere in the world, all the newspapers are saying, it's the dawning of a new day yes. for the world. That's Marxist communism. Wake up. And it's not a I real social science. Really going on. Right, Jordan? It's not a real social science. I mean, all no, these kids the, going to the college, no, I mean, they're but, full of it. But, but here's the point. The Zygdo Brzezinski's and the Henry Kissinger's yeah. and all of the Marxist, uh, fascist, murdering, bloodletting murderers who are running America Stop. behind the scenes, who own Stop. and control us, they knew, they knew that the people were tired of uh, Bush, they were. They knew that the people were were totally tired of of the establishment, the fascist establishment in America under the Bushes. That was so overwhelmingly evident to everybody that the whole of country would would jump at the idea of a young black man that's coming in and he's going to clean up all of this dirty mess. And so they knew. Just put a young black man out there and watch everybody will vote for him. Why? Because they knew everybody in the country is tired of Bush and all of the incredible crap that he was into. And so they put a young black man out there and everybody loved him. And so he immensely uh, popular and never realizing that it was the Zygmunt Brzezinski's, the Henry Kissinger's, the international, uh, uh, international fascist murderers who were financing, organizing, and directing the whole show in America wow. today. And today, I mean, we have Kissinger still running the show. I mean, at 90 years old, he's one of the, the main uh, cornerstones of uh, the relations with China. Yep. Like I said, it's uh, you know, somebody said a long time ago that uh, for those who will not learn from history are bound to repeat it. Yes. So this is what we do in America every year. We vote for this, we vote for that, we spend billions on this and billions on that, and then they get in and the people get into power and then you find out they're as corrupt as anybody's ever been. So then well, now, we, you know, now we're against that group and now we're for the other group. And right. so we're just marching left, right, left, right, and that's what we're doing. We're marching as a country into a oblivion. We're marching into chaos because nobody seems to know what's really going on because they haven't done their homework. You don't know what words mean. You don't know what the symbols mean. You have no idea where the world has come from, what history is all about. It's just you know, amazing what we humans have allowed to happen, and there's nothing we can do about it now. The only thing you can do is educate yourself, to protect yourself by educating yourself. And right, no, I was, I was talking about it today. I was like, you know, I, I love the Constitution like every other patriot, but 
you know, when all hell breaks loose, like let's say a zombie apocalypse or something, I mean, I'm not going to be able to eat the Constitution. People are, or zombies are going to be coming after to eat me, right? Well, uh, yeah, but but why do you think <clears throat> why do you think Hollywood makes movies about zombies? Because they go to they're Walmart. They're talking about they're talking about you. I know. Hollywood is talking about the American people because the American people are, in point of fact, acting like zombies. Oh yeah. They they just go to work, they just pay the bills, and they just smile and go along to get along. And if everybody's going to vote for Obama, well, then we'll all vote for Obama. Bad. No, no, now we're not going to vote for Obama. Now we're going to vote for this guy because Obama's bad, so we're going to go. Now we're going to vote for this guy. And so all Americans say, oh, okay, well, everybody's going to vote for this guy, so we'll vote for him too. And then you know, then a year later, no, he was a criminal, so we're all going to vote for this guy now, a new guy. And the American people say, oh, okay, oh, well, then we'll... We'll vote for that guy. So we're living like we're zombies. Nobody reads. Nobody can understand words. Uh, it's, it's an incredible situation where education is lost. America's yes. lost. They, 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 you know, Americans don't know where they're going. They don't know where they've come from. We've lost our jobs. We've lost our economy. We've lost our freedoms. We've lost, uh, we've lost everything, so the only thing left to lose now is your mind. So now people are losing their mind. They're on drugs and alcohol and, and, uh, and wars and violence and bloodshed. And, and television, the worst yep. drug of them all. I mean, I'm looking up uh, some news here that a CIA agent actually said that it's dangerous for you to watch TV, for, to stay away from TV. I, that's what I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a television around me, period. Because I know who owns it, who runs it, who and who designed it. I know where it was designed and why it was originally. The idea for a television goes all the way back to the 1920s and 1930s in Germany. Yes. I know all about the Nazi uh, connection to television and the, and the, and the uh, electrical engineering that went into developing a TV. As a matter of fact, there's a book out there you need to get. It's called The Four Arguments for the Elimination of Television by Jerry Mander. Nice. The book is called The Four Arguments for the Elimination of Television by a guy named Jerry Mander. Get that book and see if it doesn't uh, you know, turn your hair white. He explains who actually paid for the technology to be developed to call it television. And who did it, and who? How did they do it, and how does it work, and who owns the whole concept of TV, and and how is it being used purposely uh, to to defraud the world? And it's an extraordinary study. Yeah. And so you need to get that book. Four arguments for the elimination of television. I'm buying it right now on uh, eBay as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> And I had that many years ago, and it was, it was shocking, the stuff he brought out on how television really works. And, uh, and I could go on for hours on these subjects, but it's, uh, the bottom line is that the, the biggest problem we face on the earth today, and God knows we got all kinds of problems, but I think the biggest single problem on the earth today is ignorance. People who don't know and they don't want to know, and they're ignorant, they're ill-informed, they're unread, and they just don't know what's going on. Then nobody's ever told them, and so they just trust. Uh, they just trust the authorities, no. and uh, and so I, you know, I like that quote that they. The, the quote I, I remember from uh, oh, what was his name? The great Egyptologist um, Gerald Massey. Uh, many years ago, Gerald Massey, the Egyptologist, uh, talking about uh, religion in Egypt, he said, they, T-H-E-Y, they, they are going to find it difficult, uh, those who have accepted the authority as truth, rather than the truth as the authority. And so that's what we've done. We've accepted all of these uh, paid lackeys, these Marxist, Leninist, Soviet communist, uh, Nazi, fascist, bloodletting murderers. We call them uh, professors. 
and they, they teach in universities. Well, you better find out what's really going on in America. And that's why today anything of any importance, uh, the universities want nothing to do with it. They don't want to talk about it. It's all a bunch of nonsense. Oh, yeah. If you talk about anything that's happening in, in America today, it's all a bunch of conspiracy theories and nobody you, cares anything about it. Do you think it. they're going to tell us that the same people that brought you the television are the same Nazis that brought you Fanta? Yep. And, and, the, and the Beatle, yeah. the Volkswagen yeah, Beetle. And, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's an extraordinary story of betrayal because when you look back at the Second World War, while the Nazi party was was ravaging over the not only Europe but all over the world, uh, you know, and America was in the war against the Nazis. <clears throat> what you don't know is American the American banks and industries, industrial America, with the banks were financing and producing products for the Nazi party. Unbelievable. Ford Motor Company was making them making auto parts and 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 General General Motors was making uh, trucks and cars and jeeps, and and Chrysler was making tanks and all kinds of engines for jets that the Nazis were building. So we, the United States people, we built the Nazi party. As a matter of fact, Nazism began. I mean, a lot of people don't know Nazism began in uh, Studio City, Studio City in Los Angeles. Studio oh, yeah. City in Los Angeles was the center for what we today call Nazism. Go back and look at the history of Studio City, which is in Los Angeles, <clears throat> and you will see that Hitler was uh, the all the ideas and concepts that Hitler was expressing and working for was already operating in Studio City, Los Angeles, a long time ago. Oh, well, yeah, the Nazis had big, big, big rallies in Madison Square Garden. I mean, they uh, made nice little neighborhoods in L.A., uh, you know, right. pr prior to the the war in uh, what's known as Rustic Canyon, you know, the whole Mohan Drive. And, That's oh, exactly oh, yeah. right. That's what I'm talking about, that. Rustic Canyon, Mulholland Drive is in the city of Studio City. Yes. Anyway, uh, anyway, I just wanted to say also that uh, I have a website which is Jordan Maxwell good. Show, and and it's it's my website. I own it. It's called Jordan Maxwell Show. There may be others out there with my name, but the only one I own is Jordan Maxwell Show. Dot com. <clears throat> and on that Jordan Maxwell show, which is my website, there's another website I am advertising. It's called a research society, the Jordan Maxwell Research Website. You can join my research website. If you go to my website, Jordan Maxwell Show is right there on the home page, uh, a banner saying join Jordan Maxwell's research site. What that is, is I am putting all of my research over the years, all the books, the videos, audio tapes, all the research documents, pictures. Uh, it's a massive website of all of my work that I've been doing over the years, and you can join it by just going to jordanmaxwellshow.com, and it says research is at the join it. It's only $30 for, the, uh, for a lifetime subscription a one-time subscription rate of $30 for a lifetime subscription and that the money goes to my <clears throat> the money goes to my my uh, webman and to all the expenses of putting out a big website and keeping it running i don't have any money to keep anything running but uh, but that's where all my work is now on the jordan maxwell show and the Jordan Maxwell Research Society. Go there and, and join it. You'll oh. find a lot of stuff there. It's a, a library of knowledge, Jordan. And I just want to let you know, all, all our uh, fans on uh, on Facebook Live are wishing you a happy birthday. Patty's wishing you a happy birthday, Jordan. Uh, uh, everybody, uh, Jane and Dempsey, uh, Patty Belvins, she wants me to ask you a question. Can you please ask Jordan what are his thoughts on, on Antarctica? We, we got to her. Uh, <laughs> well, tell, 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 everybody, tell everybody to go on my website jordanmaxwellshow.com and email me 
Yes. I try. I try and get back to everybody. Email me, and I'll get back to you. Right. Uh, he said, you, we're, "We're getting a question here. Where do you see humanity heading in the future? I mean, we got all these GMO, uh, genetically modified uh, humans now. I mean, are they trying yeah, to well, create us yeah. into an alien?" <laughs> When I hear about the GMO, GMO foods, genetically modified foods, lots of people do not realize that that is a well-established idea to genetically modify foods because they're genetically modifying humans. Wow. And, then, and this is part of the arrangement. So don't worry about the foods. Well, look, first of all, at genetically modifying the human race. This is what the Nazis were talking about. This is what the communists, Marxist communists, uh, Lenin and Trotsky and Stalin, they all talked about modifying the human race to change the whole human family from being human into being a communist beehive uh, uh, an ant hill in which all humans on the earth will have no choices to do anything. There will be no freedom, no liberty, no justice, nothing. There will be nothing more than a worker for the state. Wow. And so they're going to genetically modify you. So there will be no way out for you. You need to... Uh, you or need you to won't have rights. I just It just hit me, Jordan. You won't have rights. If they genetically alter you... You will no longer be human, therefore you will no longer have the same human right. That's precisely the point. Those bastards. That's exactly right. They don't have to worry about giving you human rights. You don't have it. You're genetically modified. Oh, you're now. some you're giant work freaking pig monster. Yeah, who knows what you are now, right? I mean, <clears throat> they injected uh, you with uh, pig DNA or uh, they gave you... Uh, I mean, they're growing intestines, human intestines in pigs, I'm hearing, in DARPA or, or wherever. I know. It's, it's happening everywhere now. It's all over the world. So wow. you really need to protect yourself. And the only way you can do that is to educate yourself. If you don't know what's going on, you can't do anything. So you need to educate. Yeah. And education and knowledge is power. You That's have right. no power because you don't know what's going on. So go to Jordan Maxwell's show and join my research society. You know, start waking up and finding out how this world really works. It's worth it, folks. Thirty dollars for a lifetime membership for uh, just some of the most invaluable, most valuable uh, information that you won't find anywhere else, and uh, delivered by Jordan. I mean, years and years of research this man has done, and one of the uh, just uh, uh, best uh, esoteric researchers out there. Now, Jordan. Uh, before we go, did, did you ever play basketball when you were uh, growing up? Because uh, you're very tall, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. I was as a matter of fact, I never went to a ball game in my life. Okay, any kind of ball game, any That's kind. Fine. Uh, and the reason why is because I abhor. I, I emotionally abhor sports. I don't blame you. Uh, There's a lot of idiots yeah, I, to I, go. I yeah. couldn't stand the idea of sports. You're an intellectual. I hated it. So while all the kids were on skateboards and hula hoops and going to football games, <laughs> I was in you know I was in the libraries reading and studying and photocopying documents nice. and reading and studying my whole life while everybody else is out having a party and drinking and, and beer parties and doing what they do in colleges and universities. I wanted no part of any of it, period. And so I always went in an opposite direction to wherever the gangs were going. Yeah. Wherever all the kids were going to see a particular movie, I went the opposite way on the principle of the thing. I would never go where the group was going. It was just part of my nature of who I am to go the opposite Wherever the, the everybody's going, I'm going to the opposite way, right. period. And I've always done that. And that's why today I see the the uh, the incredible waste of the human family now today on drugs and entertainment and all that stuff because I never cared about any of it. I I I, I grew up knowing you better wake up and get an education and find out how the world really works. So that's what I've been doing with my life. So if you want to take advantage of that kind of knowledge, again, go on my research society. It's, I'm putting it all there. There's only so much uh, my my webman can put 
on from one day to the next. There's only so much you can do. <clears throat> but we've been putting it out for a long time, and we've got a whole lot more coming. That, it sounds amazing, Jordan. Now, before we go, uh, I want to, again, wish you a happy birthday. Everybody's wishing you a happy birthday. And thank you for joining us uh, this birthday bash special. We're throwing just for you. And uh, I want to ask you uh, about, about your dad and this strange story, one of these strange stories that, that I've heard you say, but not, not on my show. So I'm going to ask if, if you could tell us the story of uh, this ghost story. You, you, uh, you and your father encountered some ghostly uh, haunted house. I mean, it sounded very strange. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I grew up, I grew up a very strange lifestyle, very strange. I, uh, I, but I, it, it didn't frighten me because, I, you know, as a kid, I didn't know that, that these were strange things uh, because they were... You know, you know, they were uh, normal to me, and so as a kid, I just accepted it as normal. <clears throat> but uh, there were many, many times when I was five, six, seven, eight years old, all kinds of off-the-wall strange stuff would happen to me. I would see things that others didn't see. I would, uh, I've been out of body at like eight years old, I went out of my body, I went to another place and saw what happened and came back and told everybody and a couple of days later, the next day, it was in the newspaper, what I had told everyone I saw the night before was in the newspaper, so I was there and uh, as an wow. eight-year-old and so I've had all kinds of strange things happening to me, so that's why I, I'm well aware of how the world works today. It is nothing like you think it does. No, nothing in this world works the way you think it does. And I'm trying to put all of that on my research society. That's the same cares. thing. That's the same thing Luke Skywalker said in the new movie. He said something to that nature. That it's not going to end the way you think it is. Or you know, so it's very <laughs> similar. Wow, yeah. I mean, they just don't stop uh, reappropriating from from you, Jordan. You lived in Hollywood so long, right? Yeah, I've been I've been in Hollywood for fifty six years. I've been all around the studios. I used to do lectures and slide presentations uh, in in studios at night. Uh, I'd go into the different studios at night time, and I'd have a pass to get in, and uh, and we'd set up a, a camera, I mean a projector, and I'd do a slide presentation on secret societies and fraternal orders and. Wow. The Illuminati and Knights Templars and the Federal Reserve and all kinds of dark secrets and stuff. That was years and years ago. Back in the 70s, I used to go to the studios and give lectures. And uh, today, of course, now today, uh, it's big. T it's big all over the, uh, all over Hollywood now. Now they're, everybody's into secret societies and occultism and and devil worship and horror movies and all that. But oh, I was yeah. talking about that stuff back in the late 60s, oh, early 70s. Jordan, the new, the new Will Smith movie, they're talking about Dark Lord. They got blue aliens in it. I mean, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, but I, I, I know that Hollywood is finally waking up. I've been talking to them for the last 50 years, so it's about time they wake up. So... But just keep in mind, I, I was talking about this stuff today uh, that we talk about today in the movies and television. I was talking about it back in 1959 and 60. Oh, yeah. Some uh, 58 years ago. So, believe true, me, I, 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 I know a lot more than I'm saying. Right. No, I don't I don't blame you. You you know, they they are always listening, right, Jordan? You betcha. You and uh, bet on it, boy. You know, Jordan... Thank you for joining us. Uh, make sure to uh, visit Jordan Maxwell's Research Society. I don't want to keep you up. It is your birthday. You, you know, you probably got a nice big piece of uh, chocolate, uh, you know, birthday cake yep. somewhere, right? Okay. <laughs> and yeah, I, I can't wait till you come out here. Show, just let me know. I'm always happy to uh, do a show with you anytime. So it's fun and uh, always happy that you think of me and, you know, and, and think to ask me on the show. I appreciate that. I appreciate you, Jordan. Happy birthday, and I hope you had a very Merry Christmas. Thank you, and uh, we'll talk again. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Jordan Maxwell. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what else can I say except uh, happy birthday? But I'm not going to sing it because they'll sue me. Right, Jaja? That's right. 
Well, uh, this has been fun. Um, I can't wait to see what uh, all the discrepancies are. I mean, this is my first time launching the whole Facebook Live and Spreaker simultaneously, so we'll, let's hope that it went it went well. Great conversation with Jordan Maxwell. We will be back uh, probably next week because I'm moving to a you know a whole new location, an underground freaking facility where the reptilians can't find me. So uh, I love you guys and. Uh, Make sure to send Jordan Maxwell a whole bunch of donations. Help him out. You know, uh, join his research society. Uh, Jordan Maxwell Research Society. Jordan Maxwell. The real Jordan Maxwell. Or just ask me and I'll send you a link. Uh, go to uh, the Bruce Montalvo Show. At the Bruce Montalvo Show on Facebook. At Bruce Montalvo on Twitter. This has been uh, the Bruce Montalvo Show. Birthday bash for Jordan Maxwell. Thank you for joining us. And... Uh, Good night and uh, see you next year. Bye. We're still on live on uh, Facebook. I'm saying live, I'm saying goodbye to you guys on Facebook. Thank you guys for uh, all your input. And uh, I'm gonna get better at this thing on Facebook Live. You know, I just kept one screen up for now, but uh, well, that does it for this test run. Thank you guys for tuning in. listening to MBN Montana Broadcasting Network.